Hey guys, in today's video, we are going to do a Bitcoin analysis, though, because it's been a while since my last video, I am going to do a slightly more detailed analysis here, looking at the higher time frame count, looking at the lower time frame count, comparing the high time frame count with the Dow Jones, where we'll quickly look at the move up here since 1929, where we followed this pitchfork very, very nicely. And there's a good chance that come the US election, we could be looking to test these upper warning line parameters come the time on top of that i also want to show how we're seeing a very weak dollar right now which is further supporting crypto and just on the topic of fundamentals we are also seeing strength coming back into bonds okay so that's kind of tying in with the weakness in the dollar so with all of that said let's pull up the bitcoin chart this is the weekly time frame and i will say that i am planning to do a weekly uh, video on Bitcoin analysis so quick update every Monday okay so do look out for that of course I am doing a weekly video for the group every Wednesday that's a more detailed analysis looking at Bitcoin Ethereum and US indices just give context for the crypto assets and uh, yeah also you obviously get access to my full course now I am going to do a free trial first time I've done it but I thought I'd throw it out there so people can sample what it's all about before signing up uh, so there will be a link for that in the description of this video and it's available for the first 50 people to use the link. All right, with that said, Bitcoin, going back to the genesis here, as I say, weekly time frame, major count that we're looking at is the major wave one into here, two, three, followed by a triangle wave four. Okay, the final waves of the wave four triangle are pretty small, but here we have it as an A, B, C, d and e and then after which we're going into a fifth wave which i have it as a terminal diagonal so of that terminal diagonal we have put in the first wave we've put in the second wave and we're currently working on the third wave and we'll talk about the projections for that in a moment but after that i am expecting a fourth and a fifth to follow okay so that on the higher time frame is as i say very similar to what we're looking out for on the dow jones just pulling up the Dow Jones quickly. This is on the monthly time frame, just because we're looking back so far, all the way back to the 1929 uh, Great Depression. We have pretty much been following a very nice trend all the way up from there. And I have a feeling that we could be terminating that trend from an Elliott Wave point of view, but also from an overbought point of view, looking at the pitchfork. As soon as we go into the region of this upper warning line, then we're likely to get a very extensive pullback. Okay, so the major count following the Great Depression, we've got a, uh, a one, a two, a three, a wave four, which was all during our kind of stagflationary period here in the 60s and 70s, and then we've got a fifth. Okay, so the fifth is extended, as you can see, and we've got a first wave, a second wave, and then we go into our third, and then dot-com bubble pops, and then the fourth wave starts, making an expanded flat, here with our financial crisis finishing that off and then we go into our terminal fifth which again is extended and is looking as such so i've got it as a, a wave one two uh three into here expanding triangle wave four and then we go into a fifth again so it's a fifth of fifth of fifth of fifth uh, and as I say, the only way I can see this playing out is as an ending diagonal. Yeah, I can't see this being a one, two, and then a further three, four, five to the upside. That's just going way too far. Uh, it looks like it's going to be more of a converging pattern. I don't believe this is a top. Well, it's proven it's not a top. We've all, already made new all-time highs. But I can't see how it's just going to make a three-wave uh, termination here. I think it's got much further to go. And so the only play out that makes sense to me is this ending diagonal. So I'm looking at it as a one, two, three, four, five. And I'm expecting Bitcoin to play out in exactly the same way. Okay. Um, so I do expect a pretty big sell off in stocks when that finally occurs. And I'm looking at potentially 2026 for that to occur. Crypto, on the other hand, may be supported by the fact that it's more resistant to inflation. Uh, so we might get a lot of money shifting from fiat into crypto when inflation starts to go through the roof. Um, so yeah, but this is the general outlook from a fundamental point of view, just looking at the uh, the um, the Dow Jones and coming back to Bitcoin now. So as I say, 
there, these are reasons for why we're looking at the ending diagonal. So as I say, we've got the wave one, two, we're working on the third, fourth, and fifth. So for now, all we need to focus on is the third, okay? The rest, we can kind of we can kind of home in on that when we've got the third wave completed and confirmed. So for now, we are following, so there's a bit of confluence around this target of 170K. This is my target for this year, uh, and it's prior, just probably just prior to the US election, okay? So the vertical line that you can see here is our US election, November of this year. So I believe whatever move we're gonna put in, it's gonna happen before the US election. It might happen on the day, but I expect it's probably gonna happen a little bit before, okay? So the confluence points, we have got, if you connect our major wave three with the first wave of your ending diagonal and just extrapolate that and cross it with the, where it comes into the US election, just that, that crossing point alone is in and around that 170K point. But we have two other bits of confluence around there also. And with regards to these ending diagonals, I do find that the, um, the ending diagonal will often follow the course of the, the trend line that originates from the preceding major wave three, okay? And that's why I've drawn it as such. So the other reasons for this kind of region, the 170K to be a target, well, as you can see, the upper warning line of the pitchfork is around that region as well. And with a third wave going up, this is the kind of region that I expect it to test, okay? Um, so on top of that, well, the last thing really to discuss is our Fibonacci projection. So we take that using the previous major high and low. And if we just take our Fib retracement tool, go from high to low. And as you can see, the 1.618 coming in very, very nicely. So that's the 1.618 Fib projection coming in around 170K also. So lots and lots of confluence around that point. Hence, it's the target for now. Obviously, things can change and we'll change them as needed. But for now, I see no reason why we can't get that kind of really aggressive move to the upside for this year, especially with so many elections going on. Of course, the US election is the big one, but we've got the election in India. We've got an election in the UK in a month's time. And of course, November is the big one, the US election, okay? So much going on, and I expect a lot of volatility this year. Um, so with that said, that's the higher time frame outlook on Bitcoin. So let's just zoom in now and look at a little bit at the lower time frames. So as you can see, we're following this pitchfork, first of all, uh, and we're just gravitating back into the median line. So once we get back above that median line, I expect things to start moving pretty quickly, okay? Um, now I've got this horizontal line here. This is a quarterly level. So if you pull on your three monthly chart, you'll find an order block originating all the way back here. And we've got a very nice bounce here. And it's one reason why I think that dip down here has terminated. We've tested a very important level, but there's a more important reason why I think that correction has finished. And it's important to look into this because obviously there is going to be the argument that this is a corrective move down. So far, we've only moved up in a corrective manner you could argue that we're going to see another correction down to make a more complex WXY scenario. I don't think that's likely because it would be dragging on way too long to allow time for a huge blow off top prior to the US election. And secondly, if it did do that, I think we'll probably be dipping beneath this lower median line, which is my invalidation point. I don't want to see Bitcoin go beneath this lower median line that's that would be deeply concerning for me and would suggest we could be seeing a much stronger sell-off. But as I say, I, I, I'm pretty sure at present that we're not going to go near it. Things are looking strong, as I say. Uh, I, and I think this correction down to this point here with this dip here has terminated. As I say, we've hit the quarterly order block level. But the other thing is looking at Camarilla pivots. So I'm just going to pull those on a moment, taking off everything but the Camarilla pivots and just making this a bit more visible. So we had a very nice test of the R4. And I've spoken at length about these camera pivots, how they've been really, really key. Um, and yeah, the fact that we've gone up, cleared the R4, come down in a corrective manner, tested it, then seen the massive wick on the weekly time frame, and just gone up from there. It's looking incredibly strong. And so it's another reason why I think we've finished this correction and we can only look further to the upside from here. Okay, so just back on the daily, taking off the camera pivots now and bringing back our annotations. Um, so this is where we are. As I say, we're just coming back into this median line now. Now there was an argument, just looking at the lower time frame, that we've had an impulse, a correction, and what looks like another impulse to the upside. And then you could argue 
that from here we could have had a zigzag down which would have been a little bit concerning because it would have overlapped the pre previous uh, first wave up okay invalidating an impulse okay so that would have been concerning and that would have been concerning because it might suggest that this is only a three wave move up okay suggesting that this is a uh, first correction followed by an x wave made up of three waves and then we're going to get another complex correction down supporting the idea of a major w x y however it doesn't look like we're going to see that and there's a few reasons um so first of all if it were to do that i was expecting it to find resistance at this upper median line okay so the pitchfork holding the trend to the downside i was expecting to start it to if it was to come into this upper median line it would then get pinned straight back down maybe testing the lower median line and then potentially going back up or rolling over however you can see it's not doing that so i actually see this rather than being anything like a zigzag to the downside i think it's going to be more of a running flat so if we pull up the four hourly we can just take a better look at that uh, so i'm looking at this now to be an, an a wave down we're working on our b to be three waves up let's just make the chart a bit more visible so b coming up to here and then there is that possibility of a, an impulsive C at the end of this regular flat, uh, sorry, running flat to catch everyone out. Uh, but I think still holding on to the median line as support and then absolutely flying to the upside. Now this, as you can see, this is just a, a rough drawing that I've put on, but it's around 10th of June that you can see that this C wave might just complete itself. Okay. And that's interesting because obviously we've got some fundamentals to look into. So we've got non-farm payrolls this friday that is going to be such an important result because any weakness in the job market could support an interest rate cut okay and the interest rate decision along with cpi is coming out on the 12th of june so not tomorrow but the following day so that's uh so yeah eight days from now okay so this is, this is going to be crucial because any rate cut could absolutely send these markets flying to the upside. Yeah, so that's one potential fundamental catalyst that could trigger some serious upside, not only in crypto, but obviously more so in stocks. OK, and I think that's the situation that could trigger alts to take over from Bitcoin. So ultimately, we see a bit of an alt season uh, materializing. OK. So this, this is the lower time frame I'm looking out for. And then with the break to the upside, I'd be looking out for a good, pretty strong run in to the upper median line, okay? In and around 100K. But I don't believe, previously I was looking at 100K as a, as a upside target and then we see a major pullback. Personally, I think it's got more time to eat into this uh, pre-election uh, momentum that we're gonna see. So I think potentially we get a pullback. Could it come back to the median line? I'm not too sure. I think it might just make more of a sideways move. And then, as I say, I think it's the next break of the upper median line will take us into the upper warning line where you're eating into this target of 170K. So that's the general play out that we're looking at. Yeah, so that's the, the lower time frame that we've covered as well. Uh, so yeah, so far, this is how I'm seeing things play out. Now, I mentioned we're seeing a weakness in the dollar. So this is the weekly time frame. We've had a very nice three wavish move following a modified shift pitchfork into the upper median line. On the daily, it's probably a bit more clear. So let's just look at that. So very nice three wave move into the upper median line. And then if the dollar was to retain some strength, I would have wanted it to hold this lower median line as support. And I've posted a few... Uh, tweets on Twitter talking about the relevance of this and how if it drops this could be a big catalyst for crypto and I think that's why over the last couple of days Bitcoin has started to show some pretty decent strength and it's due to this weakness being shown very early on on the dollar so unless you're using pitchforks you might not really recognize the loss of trend here with this upward trend in the dollar but it is significant this what happened yesterday is very significant it might really struggle to find any upward momentum from here so that's the dollar weakness and i also like to back it up by looking at the bond markets so the bond markets have obviously been collapsing for a good while now since covid uh so march 2020 we've just been tumbling down 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 and down and it, but it does look very very oversold now so it hit the lower warning line here then we had another go at the lower warning line and now we're 
uh, in my opinion we've at least got to see a very good dead cat bounce so at the very least i think we're going to test this upper median line that would just be a three wavish move into the upper median line it could obviously start making a more impulsive move to the upside but at the very least i expect a, a dead cat bounce so for that that's basically saying that we're going to see bond strength and potentially rates coming down now that might be hard to imagine because obviously we still haven't got inflation under control but even if rates stay stable this could still allow uh bonds to slowly climb back up and just kind of make that recovery bounce here so as i say basically just looking at this chart the way it's setting up here we've got a very very oversold move over the last four years which was triggered by covid uh, i expect a good retracement here we've had an initial impulse a correction completed if we go on the daily we can just see that so looking at this modified shift pitchfork we've had a couple of run-ins to the lower median line and now as you can see we're breaking through the upper median line so this happened today okay it's significant it's happened today it's showing that this this downward trend is starting to break okay ideally we push through the upper warning line to get true confirmation but i'm seeing signs of this developing right now and when you combine that with the weakness in the dollar it's all looking like we're going to see that continued weakness in the dollar and continued strength in bonds and uh, and that's only going to be good for crypto so yeah so that's all as i say the fundamentals that i'm looking at supporting the the bitcoin analysis um so there we have it so just to wrap things up yeah so it looks like we're going to see that continuous strength looking at that running flat abc here on bitcoin but think about fundamentals we've got the nfp non-farm payrolls on friday in eight days time we've got interest rate decision as well along with cpi just prior to that uh, so i think that is what we're going to have to wait for before we see things really start to move all right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up with that. And as I say, don't forget, there is that free trial available for the group. If you are interested, check out the link in the description if you want access to that. And it is for the first 50 people to use the link. So, yeah, first come, first serve. All right, we're going to wrap it up with that. And I hope to discuss things further with you on Monday. All right, take care.